Okay, um, I'm going to start out with a small disclaimer that I am not a dietitian, I am not a nurse, I am not, um, you know, I did not go to school for any of this information. This is out of my own research. Um, just a little bit about myself. If you don't know me, my name is Ashley Sherman. I used to go to FPC. We lived in Norfolk for about three years and my husband is Navy. We are currently stationed in Seal Beach, California. That's actual sun behind me. So I am three hours behind you. And um, the reason why I got into healthy eating and clean eating is actually out of necessity. Um, in 2014, I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's, which is a autoimmune thyroid condition. Basically your body eats away your thyroid and your thyroid, I've learned over the years, controls many aspects of your body. And basically it made me feel terrible. Um, I was on medication and the medication really wasn't working all that great. I still had symptoms and I wanted to improve the way I felt day to day. So I started making small changes in what I ate and the, um, the results were so good and I felt so great that it has become a passion of mine to kind of want to share it with everybody else. So I'm going to share my screen here. Um, well, actually, before I do that, the class today is going to be talking about understanding the why behind, behind the healthy eating. Um, why should you eat healthy? Sometimes you need a little bit of a wake up call to help you understand what you're currently eating now and things that you might want to change. And so I'm gonna talk about a little bit about food backgrounds. I'm gonna talk about um, some, the way farming is done, um, the way, um, talk about some of the scary stuff, <laughs> if you will, in food, um, some additives. And then in the November class, I'm gonna teach you how to change your, your um, diet. So let me share my screen here and get started on this. Okay, so to start out, um, this class is creating your healthiest self through clean, eat, through clean food choices. Um, so I put a verse on the top that I think is really helpful. If we're living now by the Holy Spirit, let us follow the Holy Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. So if the Holy Spirit is guiding you in your life and the Holy Spirit is inside of you, then you should be treating your body like a temple. You should be eating really good foods. You should be um, trying to nurture your body so that you can feel better and I'm losing my train of thought here, sorry. Um, so you can feel better and you know treat yourself the way God wants you to treat yourself. Um, why should I eat healthy? So why should you be doing this? Here's my little diagram that I came up with. So these pictures on the left, this is me, sick and tired. This is me and actually in 2016, um, I was not taking care of myself. You can really see it in my face. Um, just my skin. I, I was carrying more weight. Um, I was not eating clean. I was just eating a bunch of junk. I was drinking too much. I was smoking cigarettes. This was just bad things going into my body. Um, on the right is me healthy and happy and you know if there's a little to boot that you know my husband kind of improved a little bit too 
So if you want to get on the health kick, it helps your whole family as well, too. Because basically when I changed the food in the house, I said, um, here's what you're eating. So here you go. And he jumped on board and we did it as a family and we cleaned up our eating. And not only did I, I felt so much better and he felt amazing, too. And I can feel good about the food that's going into my child as well, too. What I'm going to do also, too, is as I go through each slide um, and I give you some information, I'm going to pause at the end. So if you have any questions, you can just jot them down and then um, put them in the, in the chat box for later. And then we can answer some questions at the end. OK, so some myths about healthier, clean eating. On the left, you have the lies, and on the right, we have the truths. I will be starving. No, you will not be starving, I swear. Whoops. Organic foods are denser in nutrients. I need to be a millionaire to buy organic food. Organic foods are sold everywhere now. You can even buy them at Walmart. Some people think that you'll have to change your whole diet all at once. This is nonsense. You can change small bits of your diet at a time. Stick with small changes that you can handle so they are sustainable. Another lie is people think that they'll never be able to eat out. Where am I supposed to go? I'm going to have to eat at home and I'm going to have to cook all the time. No, you won't. Many restaurants are offering healthier options now. And Burger King is even offering the Impossible, Impossible Burger, which is a plant-based burger. All right, here's some little vocabulary. I wanted to put this vocabulary in here because I feel like it will help you understand the why of um, why you need to eat, um, eat healthy. So on the left, you have conventional farming. This is, um, so you, conventional farming is non-organic farming. So it's just your um, big farming companies, typically. So in conventional farming, um, they use synthetic or chemicals during production and processing of farm produce. Conventional farming uses pesticides, growth hormones, antibiotics, and other chemicals. I'm going to get into the, more of that later. They also use, um, they use these growth hormones and antibiotics and other medications to improve growth and prevent disease outbreak with their animals. They use insecticides to eliminate pest outbreaks and they, and they use chemical herbicides for weed controlling. Now on the right hand side, I have organic farming. So here's some of the difference. Chemicals are avoided in production and processing of farm produce. Instead, farmers use manure or compost to nourish, to nourish soil and promote growth. They use environmentally, they are environmentally friendly and free of antibiotics. Animals roam freely and feed strictly on organic foods. Organic farming relies on birds and insects to rid of pesticides or pesticides from natural sources, or, or they use pesticides from natural sources. And they also use crop rotation or, or they use mulch or hands to control weeds. And again, if you have any questions, just write them down. We can answer them at the end. So I just wanted to show you, you've probably seen these before. And I'm going to show you some labeling of some things. Um, a lot of these things, like I said, you have most likely have seen before. But when you break them down, there's a lot of information involved with them. So the stamp on the left is the USDA organic. Um, if you see these on foods in the grocery store, that means that it has all of these organic farming check boxes on here. And I'll, I'll show you another chart as well after too. Um, on the right hand side is the non-GMO verified project. And that is the website there too, if you want to look up some more information. I do encourage you guys to do your own research too. Um, you really can go down a wormhole of information. And there's a lot of stuff that on the, on the internet that you're kind of like, is this real? Is this not real? So I'm going to share some websites that I have gone on that I think give some good information. I'll show you later. 
So when we talk about um, GMO, I know that um, when GMO, for people first started talking about GMO and it was starting getting popular, there's a, a little confusion around it. So I thought this chart might help you guys. Um, what is a GMO? A GMO is a genetically modified organism, which means organisms whose genetic makeup or DNA has been altered in a way that does not occur naturally. So basically what they do is um, they take, uh, they take like a natural seed of some sort in, sci in, in science and they maybe like um, hybrid them with other seeds or they add chemicals to them to make them more pest resistant as they grow. Basically they're changing the seed that God originally made. Um, so they're changing it from its original state. Um, and why do they do this? Crops are currently modified to survive herbicide treatment, produce their own pesticides and restrict uh, resist certain diseases. There's some belief that um, by using GMO farming, we can increase the food production, but at what risk? This is just Ashley opinion here. Um, or Ashley speak or Jim speak as he likes to say. <laughs> so, um, you know, at, at what risk, you know? So if you look at the difference here, um, or this is organic versus non-GMO. So here's a checklist of, yes, non-GMO is good, but organic is gonna be your better choice. So things that are organic, are, are um, automatically non-GMO. So I do see a lot of labels in the grocery store that say organic and non-GMO. Well, it's kind of like a double speak. Like you don't, it doesn't really need to be on there because if something is organic, then you should know that it is non-GMO as well too. Um, so if you're choosing organic, it also includes no artificial colors, flavors, or preservatives. There's no synthetic fertilizer or sewage sludge. Um, sewage sludge is like a whole other class because I've actually seen it and it's, I'll, I'll, I digress. No toxic or persistent pesticides. There's no antibiotics or hormones given to the animals. All the animals eat 100% organic feed and pasture um, because you have to remember, okay, fine, your animals seem to look healthy, what are they eating? Um, organic also protects wildlife and promotes biodiversity. Organic enhances the soil fertility and it's regulated by, a, by a federal law too. So, and this website on the bottom is um, also a really good website to do some of your own research. Next slide. All right, I thought this was interesting and pretty gross, actually. So on the left-hand side, you have GMO corn seeds. Um, and on the right side, you have normal corn seeds. So these seeds on the left are called Roundup Ready. So actually what they do is they are putting the Roundup inside the corn seeds. And so when they plant the corn seeds, the Roundup is already inside the corn. So they can go ahead and they can spray all of the crop and the, um, I'm sorry, they won't even need to spray it because the Roundup and the pesticide is already in the corn. So let's think about this guys, what are you eating? You're, you're eating Roundup. Um, they also have, um, they could, so they're green. There's also a pink color. If you like pink, they make those. Um, so it's something to, to think about um, because it's really, I don't know about you, but I, I don't want a side of Roundup with my food. So why go, why go organic? Just to hone it even more. Organic does not contain any GMOs. Conventional farming depletes the soil of minerals, iron, zinc, copper, magnesium, and selenium, which then don't get into your body. So the constant farming is, 
and they're not rotating their crops so the soil doesn't have a chance to um, rejuvenate itself and fill back in those minerals. So when they keep planting the crop back in, it's missing those minerals and then it's not getting into your body. Um, being deficient in these minerals can, can cause anemia, fatigue, subfertility, and poor immunity response. Um, levels of vitamin C and antioxidants tend to be 60 to 80% higher in organic produce. Many food additives are banned from organic food products. For example, MSG, aspartame, and blue number one, which can cause behavioral issues in children. So if you choose organic, then you know that you're not gonna get any food additives in your food. It's kinder to the environment um, because artificial fertilizers are banned. Farmers rotate their crops, like I talked about, to develop fertile soil. They compost and use manure. Synthetic chemicals in non-organic farming are known to potentially disrupt the nervous, circulatory, and endocrine systems. Um, and that is what happened to me. I just, I do believe that I think um, the trigger for my Hashimoto's and affecting my endocrine system did have to do with a lot of the pesticides. I think I had a genetic, um, uh, I was genetically prone to get it because my sister and my niece have it, but I also think that that were there were outside factors that contributed to it as well. And um, pesticides is definitely one of those. All right, so we're going to talk about some the difference between processed and unprocessed foods. Am I going too fast for you guys? No. Okay. <laughs> All right, so processed foods. When ingredients in, such as oil, sugar, or salt are added to foods, they are packaged. The result is processed foods. Examples are simple bread, cheese, tofu, and canned tuna or beans. These foods have been altered, but not in a way that's detrimental to your health. They're convenient and help you build nutritious meals. See, everything you buy in a package is not completely bad for you. For sure, do I eat some processed foods? Absolutely. I um, I love rice cakes. I like tofu. You, um, the full definition is just something that's processed. I mean, if I put sugar in something or I put salt on my broccoli, I process the food. So I think it's the amount of processing that you do that is that is what is um, so unhealthy. And those are the ultra processed foods, which is the next one. Here's the category where almost 50% of our calories come from and where we should cut back. These foods go through multiple processes, extrusion, molding, milling, etc. They contain many added ingredients and are highly manipulated. Examples are soft drinks, chips, chocolate, candy, ice cream, sweetened breakfast cereals, packaged soups, chicken nuggets, hot dogs, fries, and more. All the good stuff, right? <laughs> um, and then finally, you have your unprocessed or min minimally processed foods. Think vegetables, grains, legumes, fruits, nuts, meats, seafood, herbs, spices, garlic, eggs, and milk. Make these real whole foods the basis of your diet. So if you can incorporate unprocessed or minimally processed foods and cut out those ultra processed foods, you're doing yourself a favor for sure. Okay, anyone remember Mr. Yuck or Dr. Yuck? Remember from that poison sticker? Anyone? No, I don't know. They had, they had it when I was in elementary school, this green sticker, and they would do it when they talked about like um, poisonous stuff in your house to call poison control. Anyway, um, additives and dyes. Um, I have a hard time pronouncing all these words, so I'm just going to use the highlighted parts. Um, BHA and BHT. I'm going to be talking about six types of additives and dye, dyes in the next slides. Um, these are kind of the, the, the big ones that you might see and the ones that I would um, 
ask you to look for in your packaged food and to make sure that they they are not there. It would be a good, this is a good place for you to start eliminating some of these things. Um, so I'm gonna talk about BHA, BHT. Azodicarbonamide. Some people call it the yoga mat chemical. We'll get into that. Um, recumbent bovine growth hormone and recumbent, I, I can't even pronounce it. I'm going to try to. Um, RBGH and RBST and um, potassium bromide, bromate and bromated flour is also known as bromated flour. And we're going to talk about, um, whoop. Blue dye number one, which is also called brilliant blue, and um, yellow dye number five six, which is also called sunset yellow. All right, BHA and BHT. Where is it found? Um, this chemical is found in chips, sausages, and cereals. Um, what is its purpose? It is a preservative. Uh, it's a waxy substance that keeps food from becoming rancid. I put an example here of chocolate Cheerios and you can see down, I've circled um, on the ingredients level that it has BHT in it. So it's preservative that they put into it. Um, while BH, it, what is its health factor for us? While BHA and BHT have been generally recognized as safe by the US FDA, they remain controversial. Both substances may have some disease fighting properties, but they've also been shown to raise cancer risk in animal tests according to the US National Toxology Program. And this is what I found most interesting about all of these chemicals. Look at where these are banned. Australia, Canada, New Zealand, Japan, and throughout Europe. So this, substance is banned in these countries, yet in the United States, it's perfectly normal, normal for us to ingest. Um, for me, now, like I said before, I'm not a dietitian, I am not a nurse, I, you know, this is just research that I've done, but I take it with a grain of salt and I look at it and I say, you know what, if, if this is banned in all these countries, why are we eating it here? Um, I'm just, I just want to give you some options and some things to think about in, in your um, food choices. Um, our next chemical, the yoga mat chemical. Um, I put some food up here and um, these are some examples of some of the food you can find this chemical in. Where is it found? <laughs> It's found in yoga mats, people, flip-flops. It's also found in white bread and fast food bun buns. That doesn't sound right to me. What is the purpose of this chemical? It makes things softer and more stretchy. So they put it in the flour and then it makes those fast food buns really soft and stretchy and um, squishy to eat. What is the health factor of this? It can interfere with respiratory health, including allergic reactions and asthma in some people. It's banned in Australia, the UK, European countries, and Singapore. Um, a fun fact about this too is I read an article saying that in Singapore, you can be actually be fined $500,000 for adding this chemical into any food that you make. That's how highly, um, how much they think that it is harmful to, for you to eat. All right. Um, our BGH and RBST. Here's the best part, people. There we go. All right. Where is it found? Milk, cheese, yogurt, and dairy products. What is it? What's its purpose? It's a hormone given to increase milk production in cows. So they give this hormone to the cows and it, it makes them increase more, more milk so they get more production because more people are drinking milk. So basically, I mean, think about the poor cows for a minute. You know, they're just, I don't know how, how many of you had a nurse, but you know, can you imagine nursing constantly? and given a hormone to help create your milk, keep, just keep coming and coming and coming. Um, 
the health factor, the cows tend to develop more other infections or mastitis, and then they're given antibiotics. And an increased use of antibiotics might lead to more antibiotic resistant bacteria, which then could pose a health concern for people. Um, it is banned in the European Union and Canada. Basically, if a cow takes hormones and antibiotics, and then you're drinking the milk or cheese or yogurt, then you're ingesting the hormones and antibiotics. All right, potassium bromate. Where is it found? Bread and fast food buns. What is the purpose of this chemical? It strengthens the dough and it reduces the, its baking time and saving, and it saves the manufacturers money by lowering production costs. What's the health factor? Researchers in Japan published a study showing that potassium bromate causes cancer in the thyroids, kidneys, and in body parts of rats and mice. It is believed to disappear from foods during baking and therefore trace amounts are considered to be safe in the US. The US FDA hasn't banned potassium bromate, but it does advise moderate use, oops, sorry, moderate use only and proper label, labeling. And on the bottom, you can also see where it's banned as well. And our dyes. So blue dyes on the left, it's also known as brilliant blue. Where is it found in ice cream, cereals, think Fruit Loops, canned processed peas, packet soups, bottled food colorings, icings, and in the liqueur blue curacao. It's a food colorant. The health factor for us is that US research has connected blue number one, which is also called brilliant blue with allergies, hyperactivity, learning problems, and aggressiveness and, and irritability in children. My nephew um, is actually allergic to this dye and my sister figured it out when he was about two or three years old he would, it, it was, um, she figured out that it was in like one of those popsicles, like a, like a blue popsicle. And he, he would just bounce, start bouncing off the wall and um, have anxiety about things and become really aggressive. So I've actually seen that one firsthand. It was, it was a little frightening. Um, Look at all the places it's banned. Austria, Belgium, Denmark, France, Germany, Greece, Italy, Spain, Sweden, and Switzerland, but it's totally okay to use it in the United States. Uh, the other dye is uh, yellow dye number five, six, or sunset yellow. Where is it found? Cheese flavored crackers and chips, colorful cereals, butterscotch pudding, yellow sports drinks, macaroni and cheese mixes. Um, it's a food colorant. Another name for the dye is tartrazine. Six out of 11 studies say it causes genotoxicity, a deterioration of the cell's genetic material with a potential to mutate healthy DNA and can cause growth abnormalities. So from what, I, from what I've read about this and from what I understand about genotoxicity, it's when you ingest it and then um, it, okay, so like the, you're, you're ingesting it and it changes your DNA and then so, I'm not explaining it right, I, I'm, Lori, help me out. <laughs> This is getting too scientific. Genotoxicity, so it changes. It doesn't affect you, but it's gonna affect your offspring. Isn't that correct? Oh, I can't hear you. Sorry. Um, you know, it could, if it, it really mutates your DNA, yes, it could affect your offspring, but I don't, I don't know the studies about that. Okay, all right. I was just curious to see if, if you had anything to add on that. 
um, cause I saw your face pop up. Um, but what I have from what I've read about that is, um, yeah, so it, it plays around with, with um, your DNA so that when you have children, you're, it's not affecting you, but it's affecting your children. And then, and then it's, it, and it's like a generational issue. So um, that, that's frightening. So after all that information, <laughs> yes, there are still foods you can eat. Um, I'm gonna help you guys. And um, I really feel, felt like I needed to get that kind of, you know, scary stuff out of the way to kind of make you think a little bit about what you're putting in your mouth. Um, and, and I'm, I'm going to give you some information about how to help you out here. So, um, the EWG's Dirty Dozen. I don't know, anyone raise their hand. Have you, they heard about the Dirty Dozen and the Clean 15? Heard that? Okay. Um, so, the EWG. The EWG is the environment. Environmental Working Group. Um, I'm reading the left hand, hand side of the screen here. Uh, the EWG is an American nonprofit activist group that specializes in research in the areas of agricultural, agriculture, toxic chemicals, drinking water pollutants, and corporate accountability. Um, some people do think um, the E. Hold on, I'm trying to move. Okay. EWG reports and statements have been criticized as has its funding by the organic food industry. Its warnings have been labeled alarmist, scaremongering, and misleading. Despite the questionable stat status of its work, EWG has been influential. So like I said before, there's a lot of information out there um, that some people might think is alarmist. Um, so when you read things, I think you have to take it with a grain of salt. And I think you have to do your research um, and read studies and read um, journals if you're really researching something specific. I do use um, the EWG website for a lot of my information. It has um, a food scanner on it. There's the, the website on the bottom, EWD ewg.org. It is a nonprofit organization, so I do feel good about getting information from there. Um, and they put out some good stuff. So I would recommend checking out that website. Um, so I'm going to also give you guys a copy of this page because this is going to be kind of a part of something that you can do for yourself between now and the next class if you want to. Um, the Dirty 12, or they call it the Dirty Dozen. Um, these 12 fruits and vegetables are foods that you should definitely buy organic. Um, if they spray them with pesticides, they um, seep deeper into the fruits and vegetables than um, some of the other clean 15s. Um, so because, I mean, let's face it, organic is a little bit more expensive. So if you are on a budget and you want to save a little money and you don't want to buy everything organic, then you can stick to this chart. Ugh. Darn it. Sorry, guys. My computer is super touchy. Okay. So buy, definitely buy the Dirty Dozen Organic and the Clean 15, you can buy just conventional if you want to. And I, I can give you a copy of this too. This is another handy little chart here. This is a storage guide and how to store your food. Um, some of the stuff I knew, but some of it I was like, oh, okay. Well, I mean, sometimes I was putting my apples on um, on the counter. Well, they, they'll stay longer in the refrigerator. 
So I also have this chart too that I can email it to you guys so you don't need to like write down everything like super fast. Um, and this is a good way to keep your fruits and vegetables longer. And um, how many of you, when you go to the grocery store, you know, you get, you put your produce in the plastic bag, you, raise your hand if you put it in your refrigerator in that plastic bag. Don't, it will, it, it, um, the moisture in that um, accelerates the decomposition of your fruits and vegetables and it goes bad faster, especially if you're eating for like one or two. I learned how to eat. Um, my husband's been on a lot of deployments, so I had to learn how to eat for one. <laughs> and, you know, you go buy a head of broccoli. I'm not going to eat that whole head of broccoli in like one sitting for one person, you know? So how do you make it last? Um, I wrap them up. I take them out of the plastic and I put them in a, um, a in a kitchen towel, just like one that you have in the kitchen and you dry your hands with, wrap it up in that and then put it in the crisper and it'll last longer. And then you can pick off of it or in a paper towel. All right, and don't forget to write down your questions if you have any too. Let's see what my time is, okay. All right, so here's a little bit of, um, here's some stuff that you guys can do um, over the next month if you want to. Um, look through your package food and pantry and see if you have any items with the additives that we talked about. Um, just look through the ingredients. Um, and I also try to, if I'm at the store and I'm, and I'm reading a package and I can't either pronounce what's in it or I have no idea what's in it, I put it right back on the shelf. I, I mean, I'm not going to play like a guessing game of what this chemical is. My peanut butter says peanuts and sea salt. That's it. So um, that's, that's a good thing to go by. And don't be fooled by the word natural. Um, when you, I mean, these food companies are looking for the ult, ultimate consumer and they're gonna put right at your eye line, all of, all of the um, most bought foods. Um, so when you're walking down the aisles, look low and, and look high. That's where I buy a lot of my foods. They're not right in the eye line. Um, Cause some people think, I don't know where to buy this stuff. It's nowhere. We'll just look up or down. Um, and definitely, like I said, if you don't know what, how to pronounce it or, or on the label or what it is, put it back. Um, print out that dirty dozen and clean 15 and put them on your fridge. Um, and, um, and start with little changes. Like I said before, I didn't change my entire eating in like a week. I, I mean, it was over a long period of time. I started, um, I took gluten out of my diet. So just a little bit, uh, side note, um, I'm gluten-free and I'm vegan. And so it took me a long time to figure out what to eat and how to eat. And um, I didn't do it in, like I said, in like a week. It was a long transition of, of learning how to do it. Um, so like I said, start with, the, start with this, start with the dirty dozen and a clean 15. Like just see if you can start there. Don't overwhelm yourself. Um, use the fruit and veggie storage guides. See if your fruit lasts and your vegetables last longer making the, uh, that small change. Um, try to shop organic. Don't forget the frozen fruits and vegetables too. Frozen fruit is um, cheaper to buy is in organic as well too, and they do sell it. Co they sell it at Costco, at Walmart. This stuff is everywhere. I, when I first started doing this, I would go to the grocery store when I had like some time when my daughter was at school and I would like walk down the aisle, just like really sl slowly. And 
be like, oh, wow, they sell this here. Oh, oh, they have this here. And then once you figure out some new foods that you like, then you'll, you'll have your um, routine of foods th that you want to eat and what you know. Um, and then the last thing I have on here is switch up your plastic leftover containers for glass. Um, it is better to, uh, um, by no means should you be putting plastic in the microwave ever, but um, even storing food. So um, storing hot food in plastic, some of that can um, leak, some chemicals can leak out of the plastic into your food. So try to switch it over to glass containers. It's just a, um, a little bit of a healthier change that you can make. And so for November, um, this is what I'm gonna be talking about in November. I'm gonna tackle each food group individually. And I'm gonna go through some common labels, the common food labels, like how I showed you that organic label and uh, the GMO label. I'm gonna be talking about some of those labels and what they mean because, I mean, they've got a label for everything. And it can be really overwhelming when you're in the grocery store because you don't know what you're looking about, looking at. So it's about educating yourself. I'm, uh, I'm gonna be talking about serving sizes and I'm gonna be talking about alternatives and substitutions. So maybe you're thinking about um, getting off dairy and you don't even know where to start. Well, I can show you what some alternatives and some substitutions are available out there for you and where to buy them. So, um, Joel, that is all I have for today. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Hope awesome. I didn't awesome stuff. Um, so I, we do have a few questions in the chat that I wanna get to. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll throw those out there in a second. Before I do that though, um, if you are, so I've captured the attendance for this evening. If you receive emails from the church, uh, regularly, um, if you're on our mailing list, and we have your email already, and Ashley, you will send uh, some of those those charts and things from from the presentation. Correct? Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. So between now and the, the, the November class, you'll be getting. Um, I know there was a lot of really good information. Um, so if you're frantically scribbling notes, um, have no fear. Uh, Ashley will will send you um, those things. And also, this uh, just a reminder: this class is recorded. Um, and I can share that link with you again if there's something you want to go back if you um, if you missed. Um, so that being said, we do have a few questions. If you um, have a question, uh, go ahead and put it in the chat as well, and we'll we'll get to that. Um, the first question uh, that I want to go back to the beginning. So Ashley has eating cleaner and some of the things you've talked about um, helped to improve your Hashimoto symptoms. Um. It has. So with my Hashimoto's, I had, I was having a lot of joint pain and um, inflammation. And um, by cutting out dairy and meat, um, the inflammation has gone down. Um, but I also do a lot of other things too, whereas I've cut out all endocrine disruptors and chemicals from my lotions and camp and soaps and all that stew that that's a whole nother lesson but <laughs> um so it, it goes beyond it but the first start is for sure is the is the food because the food is the medicine for sure excellent thank you for that um the next question has to do with with food packaging and labels and and chemicals and it's a two-part question um so the first part is uh, maybe an I think you spoke to it a little bit, but if you could go a little bit more in depth. So are all of the dyes and harmful additives listed on food packaging? Um, so maybe could you clarify what the regulations are and what's required to be listed? And if there's, uh, I guess the question is kind of asking if there's hidden chemicals or ways that food companies get around that. Hmm. Um, as far as I know, and the research that I've done, um, I would say that they have to put what is in there i do know that um this is not food but if you see some if you see fragrance 
in like a lotion or something like that, that is a hidden thing that they put in there for their own concoction of chemicals they might get around. But if it's USDA regulated, I would say that they would have to list everything that's in there. Okay. And so the follow-up to that Did question- I answer that, that whole thing? Okay. Yeah, well, the, and the follow-up to that is, um, so what do you, do you have any tips for unpackaged vegetables? Or so thinking about like if you're at a farmer's market or mm -hmm. maybe not necessarily in a supermarket, um, ways to, to find out um, what you're actually getting? Um, that's a good question. And, I, and I'm gonna go a little more into that um, in the second class. Um, when I go to farmers markets, and this is just me, I have a hard time when when they're when they write down, you know, like organic, and I'm like, I don't know, you could have just brought that in from anywhere, and your field could be right next to another conventional field where it's, their pesticides are leaking into your soil, so it gets so you know across. But I do have. Um, there, there are these um, things called CSAs and that I'm going to be talking about in the, um, in the, uh, in my November class that I actually used when I was in Norfolk. It is um, um, organic farming, like local farmers that you can group together with friends and get um, deliveries to your house and of certified organic from certified organic farms so most of the farms that are certified organic are certified by a third party um the, the farm is so you know they're not like certifying themselves because that wouldn't make any sense so um so if they're uh, third party organic certified and um then you would trust them but farmers markets it, it's hard to know honestly. Okay. Um, good. Thank you for, thank you for that. Um, so, and another, another plug for the second class. Um, I think you're going to get into more in depth on, on that one. Um, there, so there's a few more questions as well. This one's more, more a comment, um, but I'll read it to see if you have anything you'd like to add. Um, so somebody said their that their motto at home is um, the shorter the ingredient list, the better. Um, which I believe you talked about as well with the, the peanut butter. Mm -hmm. um, and also uh, to stay away from high fructose corn syrup. Mm -hmm. uh, so a good, good comment there. Oh, for sure. um, so what about sustainable farming? Uh, the cost to be, okay, so um, going back to, to farmers markets, the cost to be certified organic is prohibited for small farmers. The, I don't understand. Say the question. So the, the question is, uh, is what about sustainable farming? Okay. Um, because the cost to, to be certified organic, as you're saying, um, is prohibited for small farmers. So I think it's going back more to the, the question of like farmer's market or road of sustainable farm. farming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I talk a, a more about that in the second class too. Um, I don't want to just like answer every question like I'm going to talk about that in the next <laughs> class, but I also don't want to like waste your time because it's it's kind of a long answer okay um, but we do talk about sustainable farming and yeah that for sure okay great we'll, we'll look forward <laughs> to that one um here's a question how about alkaline water um i don't know too much about alkaline water um honestly i i do i i drink alkaline water sometimes um like i i go and i get my water filled in i get my water from whole foods and it has like this filler station um and i i bought my own like pva free jugs and then i bring them in and i fill them up and they do have an alkaline water section and it does taste different to me it tastes better but in terms of health wise, I don't know too much information about that. Okay. Um, on that, just this is a follow up from just the thought from 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 me on water. Um, do you have any information or thoughts about uh, city water or other sources of water at home 
Um, and, and as far as if your water is tested or if there's, uh, so tap water versus bottle water, do you have any, any thoughts um, or insights to add there? Um, I am kind of like a water freak. Like I don't drink out of the tap. I don't trust city water. I can smell, I can smell it that I wouldn't want to drink it. Um, I use, and, and even, I mean, like, where do I, where do I stop? Um, I, I filter my, my shower water with little, with shower filters, and I can tell the difference on my skin. I just think there's a lot of harsh chemicals that they do put in tap water that I can taste and I can tell the difference on my skin. Um, I always drink like filtered water. I never drink like bottled, like the small bottle of waters. A, I think that's a waste um, of all the plastics. I either drink, I get, like I said, I get the big five gallon jugs um, that I buy, fill up at Whole Foods and um, I drink, I drink that water. I just feel better about it. I use it for cooking. I use it in my tea kettle. Um, I just don't feel that, I mean, they say that the drinking water is safe, but I don't trust it. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm over the top probably, but <laughs> I don't drink from the tap. Okay, good. Uh, thank you for that. Um, oh, here's an easy one for you. So what what was the CSA that you used when you were in Norfolk? It was called Farm Chicks. And we okay. actually, in our neighborhood, and they have a, they have a website. Um, you just Google Farm Chicks CSA and, you, and you'll find it. Um, they, if you group together with like, I, I group together with like four other people. And if you get a, an order of over like a hundred dollars, it's free delivery. And in my next slides, I'll show you what they get. Yeah, and Farm Chicks is on Facebook. I'm not on Facebook, so I don't. Um, the amount of food that came with this order for $35 was insane. And it was so good. Awesome. Is it uh, farm chicks? C H I C K S. Farm yes. chicks. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I put it in the chat for for anyone that's interested. But like Ashley said, you can just um, Google it. Uh, so there are there's a few more comments, and I think maybe another question or two. Um, oh, so Ashley, going back to your your thought about fragrant fragrances in uh, certain products, um, Christine shared that some things as uh, flavors or spices or artificial flavorings or artificial yeah. colors do not have to be listed if they're on the uh, GRAS list. Okay. Uh, so good thought there. And uh, Lori also shared, so going back to the water discussion, your body maintains its pH very well. So there's um, no need for, uh, I'm assuming this is to the alkaline water comment, um, health-wise, yeah, your body regulates pH okay. um, on its own. Uh, Liz shared a uh, link to Norfix tap water. Um, good resource there. Uh, okay, so Norfix score um, for tap water is there for you. And oh, and then so here's a uh, wait. I want to make sure I don't miss a question within a comment. U.S. bottled water is often, uh, so in Germany, the tap water is better tested than the bottled water. The issue is the spout and the water line and U.S. additives in tap water might be a problem. U.S. bottled water is often purified drinking water. Why is it done? Uh, yeah, these are some good questions about water. I, in, I just I don't know too much about. Now I've got a new re topic to research. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> here's uh, here's potentially another one. Um, somebody shared at one point I had a cow share and bought raw milk. It was okay. delicious. Any thoughts about raw milk? Oh me. Yeah yeah. Uh, 
I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I've never had raw milk before. I haven't had milk in five years. I drink like almond milk. Um, but I, at one point in time, I, I did go in and when I was eating meat and bought a cow with a friend and, um, we had it slaughtered and it was a grass fed cow and had it slaughtered. And I, um, put all the meat in my, um, coffin freezer out back. And, uh, that, I mean, we got it for like a super cheap per pound price because grass fed meat is really expensive. And if you're going to eat meat, that is the way to go. I would say it's the healthiest because I mean, cows don't eat corn, they eat grass. So, um, you should be eating grass fed cows, but grass fed meat, but like, why is it so expensive? Because that's the way it should be to begin with. So, um, I don't have that cow hookup anymore. So I don't know. Where to yeah, I guess asking the vegan to answer milk questions is a, can be a little bit yeah, no, Well, no, I mean, I, I don't know, um, too much about raw milk. I mean, I do know it's not pasteurized. So, um, you know, health people with health issues should, Lori, I see you unmuting, please go. Well, the brucellosis is a very dangerous disease and you get it from raw milk. So that's why milk is pasteurized. Yeah. And that's why drinking raw milk is dangerous. All right. Um, thanks, Lori, for that. And so we have, we're just about out of time, but I think we have time for, for this one final question um, and, and then we'll wrap it up. Uh, so uh, this may be, um, we'll, we'll see how far we get into this. So uh, the comment says, this was excellent, thanks. Um, this might be a simple question with a complicated answer, but given the health consequences you've outlined, can you speak a bit more uh, about why these harmful substances have not been banned in the US as they have been elsewhere? I mean, that's a great question. Uh, money, probably. Um, I mean, you could lead me down a wormhole of conspiracy theories here, but, <laughs> you know, I mean, what happens when you're unhealthy? You get sick. What do you need? You need pills. So, you know, I don't know. I, I, I don't know um, if anyone has anything they'd like to share or add or any ideas. I mean, I don't know, but um, that's why, like, I, I'm just, I just, when I got sick and I started doing research, I was appalled at the amount of misinformation i guess i would say that was that's being put out to consumers like just things people assume like for example my mother when you say she's like well it says all natural i'm like it's all natural what read the ingredient no one you know a lot of people aren't reading the ingredients they're becoming the perfect consumer of just saying oh this looks healthy and just taking it off the shelf where we need to do our own research and you know, take ownership of, of our own bodies. Like I'm a doctor's worst nightmare. Like when I go into the doctor, I've got this, 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 and this, and you know, and, and I, and I ask questions like why, or, you know, why do I need to do that? Or, you know, so I think some people are just so used to just going with the flow of what people do in society that they don't question why we're eating this or or drinking that and, and am i going too off topic probably but you know i just think that um hunter you're laughing at me <laughs> don't get me on, on on a roll but i just think i just think people need to just do your own research that's what i'm saying like this this should be like a like a starting pad a, a, a starting place for you guys to start to to do more research about things that are affecting your body so if you have a heart condition or you have autoimmune disease or you you know you get headaches all the time well why are you getting headaches all the time 
you know, don't just go and take a pill. Is it something you're eating? Is it something that you could be changing in your diet? Are you, are you allergic to wheat? So I think a lot of it starts with like stepping back to the basics of food because food really is medicine and it can change the way you feel. I can't even tell you how much better I feel every day from eating well. I ate like six candy corns the other day and I thought I was gonna die. Like, I'm not kidding you. Like my head hurt so badly and I had to like lay down and Jason, my husband ate them too. And we were both like laying on the couch, like, oh my gosh, what is, what is wrong with us? And I'm like, it's the candy corn. But this is like what happens to your body when you start taking out all the things that aren't supposed to be in there. When a simple little thing like white sugar goes in, your body, it, 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 it's, it's like too much. So yeah, basically just do, do what works for you. And, um, you know, go on your own path, but ask questions, especially to your doctor.